Have you ever caught yourself in a pensive moment and you think to yourself, what even is a module? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today on Terraform Tuesday. Strap in. We are doing some fundamentals with Terraform modules. <music> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today is a request from a viewer who wanted me to just kind of break down in fundamentals. What is a Terraform module? How is it used? How do you get information into a module? And how do you get it back out of the module? How do you do that? What What's the mechanism here? So that is what we're going to cover in this episode. I think it's going to be a little bit shorter. Um, there's not going to be a whole ton of examples. I really just want to Break it down to basics. If you are relatively new to Terraform, this might actually be useful for you. And if you've been using Terraform for a while, it might clear up some ambiguities for you. So that's what we're going to get into. Before we do that, I just two quick things. Did you know that I have two different podcasts? It's true. I do. It's a little ridiculous. I admit that. One is the Daily Check-In. It's a daily podcast that I do throughout the week. It's only about 10 minutes long. So if that's of interest to you, you want to hear me talk about different technical topics, career development, or just, you know, some personal stuff, that is available. And the link is down in the description. Check it out. If you like it, subscribe. I always appreciate that. The other one is called Day 2 Cloud. If you want to get in-depth interviews with technical professionals about a variety of different cloud topics. Day two cloud is your go-to. We have great conversations. We just published something from uh, Daniel Mangum about Crossplane, which I was just absolutely fantastic. And we also published one from Brian Gracely, where we talked about simplicity versus complexity in cloud. So if any of those topics sound interest to you, go check out day two cloud and, uh, and I hope you enjoy it and subscribe. Now let's get down to Terraform modules. Okay, let's start with basics. What is a module in Terraform? It's actually really, really simple. A module is a collection of Terraform files in a folder. That's it. <laughs> it's, uh, and we're done. Bye, everybody. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But if, if you get down to brass tacks, what a module is, it's just a collection of Terraform files. Now, those Terraform files can be either .tf files that use HCL2, HashiCorp Configuration Language Version 2, or they could be tf.json files. So that would be in the JSON format. HCL can always be converted into JSON, or you can just do it in straight JSON. Now, one of the reasons I like Terraform is I don't have to use JSON or YAML so I tend to shy away from that. But if you're programmatically creating your Terraform files, then maybe JSON makes sense to you. So that's that's at its core what a module is. Now, the next thing that you might be curious about is the root module. What's the root module? You may have heard that terminology before. Okay, the root module is the directory you're working in that has your core Terraform files, the core of the configuration that you want to deploy when you're running your Terraform commands from within that directory, that's the root module. So that that's all it is. There's nothing overly special about it. It's simply the directory that you're currently working in. Now, what's important about that is when you're running commands like init, plan, apply, destroy, etc., they're operating on a state that's defined by the root module. And they might be calling child modules, they might be calling different variables, all of that kind of information, that's going to be packaged up and used within the context of the root module. So that's, if you hear that term, root module, that just means the module or the folder that you're actually working in and running your Terraform commands against. Okay, now we know what the root module is. Obviously, a root module implies that there could be child modules. Child modules are when you invoke a module from within the configuration in your Terraform files by using the module keyword and then whatever syntax you need to invoke that particular module. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. But that's essentially what a child module is. And of course, a child module can it call another child module within it. And you can have this nested module thing going down that can get pretty complicated. I wouldn't recommend going too many layers deep on that, 
But you should be aware that if you're using a module that someone else wrote, it may also be pulling in other modules. So just kind of be aware of that going on. Okay, now that we've defined what a module is, what a root module is, and what a child module is, how do you get information into a module? How do you get information out of a module? And how do you use the information that's inside the module? Okay, let's break this down into three different categories. And we're going to start with how do I get information into a module? There are two primary ways to get information into a Terraform module, whether that's a root module or a child module. The first way is to use variables. When you hear variables in the context of Terraform, think inputs. These are your inputs into the module. You're passing Terraform information at runtime that it will use inside its configuration. And variables can be used in the root module or they can be used in child modules. So you might pass information into the root module, which it then passes to a child module. So when you hear variables, think inputs. Okay, so that's one way. What's the other way of getting information in? Well, there's a thing called data sources. Data sources in Terraform are a way to query an external source for some kind of information. So let's say I'm building out a network in AWS and I need a list of availability zones. I can use a data source to query the list of availability zones based off a region. Okay, that makes sense. Let's say I'm spinning up a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure and I have some custom images. My custom image catalog could be another data source where I query that custom image catalog for the image I want to use in my deployment. So two different kinds of data sources right there. So now we have two ways of getting information into our Terraform config. We've got one, we've got variables or inputs, and two, we've got data sources. Awesome. Now, once you have information inside Terraform, you might want to massage it. What, how can you do that and what form does that take? That is local variables or local values. Now I'll say at the beginning that this can be a little bit confusing. When we talk about variables in the broad sense in Terraform, we're almost always talking about input variables. But there's also local variables, also called local values. I've heard it termed a bunch of different ways. These are values that are computed inside the configuration and then are reusable throughout the configuration. So you might want to take a bunch of information from different variables and data sources and put them together in some sort of complex object type, or you may just have a name that you want to use throughout your entire configuration. You can define that with a local value or local variable. Like I said, I've heard it both ways. When we're talking about local information, that's not information you're giving directly to the Terraform configuration. That is a value that's being computed by the configuration itself. A good example that I use is often when I'm creating new resources, I might want to add a random number to the end of my resource so it's globally unique. And the way that I create that name is I take a prefix as an input variable and then I add to the end of that the random number and I store that in a local value and then I can use it as I name each resource throughout my configuration. So that's a good example of how you'd use it internally. Where else can you get information? Well, every data source that you create and every resource that you create is going to have attributes associated with it. Those values can be used anywhere else in your configuration as needed. And oftentimes it makes a lot of sense. Let's say I'm creating an Azure virtual machine. I usually have to create a network interface for it. And when I am creating that virtual machine, I can refer to that network interface by its address within my Terraform configuration. Just like I can refer to my custom image that I'm using for my Azure, Azure virtual machine by using the data source, which starts with data dot and then the path to the data source that I am using. Okay, so that's how you use information inside of Terraform. You can compute local values for use throughout your configuration, or you can use the attributes of your resources or your data sources. You can also use the information exposed as outputs by your module, and that would be the last thing that I want to cover, which is outputs. How do you get information out of Terraform? 
Well, the way you do that in the context of modules is through outputs. And I'm going to be honest, most of the time outputs are used by child modules to pass information to the root module or the parent module. I've done my job, I've created my resources that you've defined inside the child module, and now you want to use some information about those resources, and I will expose that through an output. So that's generally what outputs are used for. The other time that they're used is if you want to use state, Terraform state as a data source. The only information you can query from state as a data source is anything that's exposed through outputs. So if you know you are going to look at the existing Terraform state from another configuration and use that information as a data source in your config, make sure that that state config has the necessary outputs that you're going to use as inputs for your configuration. So that's the two reasons to really use outputs. And also anything you define as an output will be sent to the terminal when Terraform runs. That's very useful when you're running it locally. It's less useful when you're running it through some sort of automation pipeline because you're never going to see that output. So that is how you get information out of a module. Now let's put it all together. As I said at the beginning, Terraform modules are simply a collection of Terraform files in a particular directory. That's, that's the magic. That's all they are. Now, how do we get information in? Remember, that is through variables. So we'll define a variable block and we'll say what type of variable this is, what data type it is. We might give a default value, might give it a description. So that's one way to get information in. The other way to get information in is through a data source. So we'll define our data source by using the data keyword, the type of data source we want to use. And then there's usually some additional arguments you'll need to supply for that data source. Now, how do we work with information once we're inside our Terraform config? Ah, local values to the rescue. We'll define a locals block, and then within that locals block, we'll define the local values we want to use. And you can define more than one locals block inside your configuration. And then you can refer to these local values by using the local keyword dot the name of the locals value you want to use. It's just that simple. Okay, and then there are also attributes that are associated with your data sources and resources. And you use those through the standard addresses, making sure to refer to the correct attribute by name. All right, now the last thing is how do you get information back out of your module? And that is through outputs. To do that, we'll simply define an outputs block, give that block a name, and then the value that we want to expose as an output. Now, older versions of Terraform only allowed you to expose outputs as strings. And that was fairly limiting when it came to passing complex object types up to the invoking parent module. Nowadays, you can pass any object type as a value, and that makes it a lot easier when you want to use a complex object type in your main configuration files. So that is modules in a nutshell. We've got our inputs. We've got our local values and we've got our outputs. And that is what composes a Terraform module. And that'll do it for this Terraform Tuesday. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hey, if you'd like to support Terraform Tuesday and some other projects I'm working on, you become a patron. It's only $2 a month and you get a weekly newsletter as well as these Terraform Tuesday videos early when I can get around to it. It's been, life's been a little busy, but I am going to get back to getting those videos out a little earlier. So you get a sneak preview if you're a patron and there's going to be some other content coming along as well. So if you can support and you'd like to, I would certainly appreciate that. Beyond that, if you uh, want to check out my Terraform certification guide, that's another way to support me and support yourself by getting certified in HashiCorp Terraform. If that's not your thing and you just want to subscribe to this channel, I would appreciate that as well. And maybe even share it with a friend, you know, whatever you want to do. And until next time, as always, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. There was this book that I found when I was a kid in my parents' house. And this isn't like a weird story. This is just kind of fun. I found this book called Flatland. And, um, it really inspired me from a geometry standpoint and just like a thinking standpoint, because it gets into the idea of 
what would a two dimensional world look like and how would they observe a, a three dimensional being coming into a two dimensional world? And then what's a one dimensional world look like? And then what is a four dimensional or five dimensional? It was like, as a young kid, this was mind blowing stuff. So if you haven't ever checked out Flatland, I highly recommend it. It is a good book and I'm excited because I found it at my parents' house. I thought it was lost forever and now it's mine forever. You can't have this one. Bye.